Hi, welcome to Salty Beaver Explorers. This morning we're down at Dunn Lake and we're gonna be taking the RMAX up to Baldy Mountain and hopefully have a look at a couple of mines and the old forestry tower on top. So stay tuned and enjoy the ride. Dunn Lake and Baldy Mountain are located in the interior of British Columbia, across the North Thompson from Little Fort, BC. You never know what can happen when you're out on the road. We just started out and got a flat tire. It's pretty rocky, so I'm guessing it's just a sharp rock that we ran into or ran over. There was some excitement for the uh, some excitement for the morning. Oh, Melanie's got a water on top. Are you used to? Well, we broke down, but at least we have a view here, which is quite nice. With Dunn Lake down below, we're just waiting for the glue and everything to dry on the ATV right now. So it looks like we're good to go and on the road again.
After some research, it was determined that the bird we saw was either a dusky or a sooty grouse. These both used to be called blue grouse, but have now been separated into two separate species. So we're stopped here at this first mine site, which is the Sweet Home Mine, and we're going to go check out the tailings pile. The Sweet Home was a promising vein and the ore was brought to the Wind Pass Mine, where we're going to be heading next. The mine operated between 1916 and 1939. Well, here's an old two-seater. <laughs> Tipped on its side. And the pits, the pit is to the right of it, which I'm not sure we want to go check out. I'm standing on top of the tailings pile here. Oh yeah, there we go. You can see the row of it down here. Can't certainly love the view from up here. It's beautiful. Let's see what everybody else has found. Oh, is that the mine shaft in there? Going this way. Going out. Uh, ooh, it is cold. You could feel the cool air coming out of the mine shaft. Wait till you get to the mode. Yeah. Copper and silver. This goes there in the mountain. It's going quite deep. So apparently there were two, two veins. One was the sweet home, that's this vein, and the other one was the the wind pass. And then there's also a third mine site. Oop. And this molly core has has done a whole pile of work in here, and it assay is really strong still. So they're probably be coming back. But it's just really hard to get to, right? Crazy. Wow, so it's what, August 1st, and there's still snow in there. It and it is cold. You can really feel the cold, cold air whipping out of there. So back in the day, were this mine and the other mine related? Like Yes, okay. same, they're the same drifts. Okay. So there's the wind pass drift and there's the sweet home drift. And they call them separate mines because they're separate entrances. They connect but them. I think it's the same the same uh, um, ore body. And there's the sign warning us to stay out. And I don't think I really want to go in there anyway. But it's pretty cool to have a look at. I wonder how far deep it goes in. <laughs>
that's a big debris. Yeah, I think there's another road up above us. Yeah, I think so. I think there's another road up above. I think that's the old cookhouse. It's the old cookhouse and hall or something, I yeah. think. Or, or, yeah. This was party central in here. <laughs> party central in there. Ooh. Ooh, it's pretty heaved. So this was probably the old cookhouse from the mine. After looking at old photos, we've determined that this building isn't the actual cookhouse slash dining hall. This photo shows it here in the foreground. So we don't really know what the purpose of this building was for, but we do believe it's in this photo as well. This picture shows the cookhouse dining hall in about the 1920s or 30s. this the old hot water tank yeah. I don't think there's a meadow there Ron it looks like there's a big drop-off oh because there road. it looks you can see it drops road. down because there's some of the cable yeah oh, there's yeah. a trail over there that looks like it goes down quite a ways hmm. those things there I think those are like four boxes What's a core box? Oh, those things. Those are core boxes. These are core yeah. boxes. Yeah. Sample boxes. So it looks like there's old 1970s carpet or 60s carpet in there. Bunks were back in here because there's another yeah. flat spot. Probably because yeah. down this way, look at how steep it goes I know. down. But it, and I can't see if it's flattened out or not. Uh, I don't think so. What's all back in here? Don't want to step on there since the floor is all rotting out. Obviously, it's an add on to this original log cabin. Ooh, oops. Oh, God damn it, I found a big pile. Oh, oh Ron, you put the window down. Look at that, our lovely fold down window. Give us some fresh, cool air on this hot day. Okay, you ready? 
Here we're at the top of the Windpass Mine now. This mine operated between 1916 and 1939, and they would bring the ore down by tram all the way down the mountain to the north end of Dunn Lake. So here's the tailings pile. And there is going to the mine oh, shaft. I'm sweating. That feels good. <laughs> Can you feel it already? Yeah. Oh my God! You go right here. Woo! That's cool. <laughs> Sweet. Lots of water still coming out. Even the cable. Oh, there's cable there. Yeah. Holy crap! That's cold. Do you need a hand, Aunt Lucy? No, no. So far, so good. Thank you. Oh, that's a bigger puddle. Yeah, I gotta try and get through here without uh, getting my feet sweat. Oh, there we go. Oh, you can definitely feel again cold air coming through. And then this is for the wind pass mine. And also full of ice. Is it? it doesn't look like it goes very far in, but it must. And this is the original entrance of the Wind Pass mine. That's pure ice. Yeah. Oh. Holy crap. Oh, Dennis, that's did cold. you bring a, oh, a flashlight? Yeah. That uh, doesn't do any good. Nope. No, it doesn't look like it's it goes ice. very far yeah. in. Oh, it's in there. And it's l shallow, so it must be... Like, why would they have it so... Like, if people oh, have God. to go in there. I'm guessing it must go down a little bit. I don't know how much ice is in there. Yeah. It goes in. A, it's on a curve. Oh, really? Yeah. That's weird. That's cool. Either that or it's all ice in there. <laughs> Hard to think that on such hot days in the middle of summer that oh, it's yeah. ice. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, let's find our way back. Tailings. Look at the tailings. The tailings aren't as exciting. <laughs> well, we used to get them coarse samples. And we used to get them. I don't know if they still have them around. Oh, pick them up here. Yeah, I picked some up. I don't know what I was going to do with them. I brought them home and then threw them out. <laughs> So there's part of the cable. So they had a tram, a cable car, going all the way down to Dunn Lake. Dennis went and looked. He said it, it the mine kind of curves the hole. It goes in and then you curves. Have a hey? Did you take a light? Yeah, I had my flashlight, but it doesn't do you any oh. much good. Can't see in there very really well. So lots of little remains of tin stuff. More here, I think, than uh, at the sweet home. down pretty good there. They've definitely mined quite a bit for gold, I believe. According to the British Columbia records, the mine produced 93,435 tons of material, from which total production was said to be 34,455 troy ounces of gold, 1,719 troy ounces of silver, and 78,906 kilograms of copper. Oh, there's an old building there, too. That's the tram. Oh, is that for the tram? Yeah, because you can see where the water spruce thing or whatever oh, okay. went down there, too. But I think that was part of the tram. Oh, there's a few buildings there.
Oh yeah, over here you can see that was probably over there where they took the tram, like where the cable was. See yeah. it? Yeah. And then there's the little building. Straight that way. Yeah, to Dunn Lake. Growing up, you could see the line that come up the mountain mm -hmm. where the tram was, where the, the cables were. Oh, you could actually see the line cut? Yeah. yeah. Well, that was pretty cool seeing all that history in British Columbia, and hopefully, I can find some other information out about it. Now we're heading up to the top of Baldy Mountain for some more British Columbia history as we're going to be checking out the historic Forestry Lookout Tower. But first we have to navigate through some cows. Yeah, I found the key. 
made it up to the Baldy Mountain Lookout and there it is behind me here and the views from up here are absolutely incredible. Baldy Lookout was built in 1927 to be used as a fire lookout tower. It is one of the best lookouts in the Kamloops Forest District at an altitude of 7,500 feet. It has a spectacular view of the North Thompson Valley, and on clear days you can even see Mount Baker in Washington State, as well as the Coast Range Mountains. <laughs> as you can see, here is the lookout, and it is actually cabled down onto the mountain. <laughs> So let us have a look inside and so you can stay up here I guess if you needed to. There's a little wood stove and incredible views which we will look at in a moment. Ooh, a little sink and some supplies. Looks like somebody has left a little not for fire starter. There is a book which we will add something to later. A little guest book. Oh, and here's another guest book. So this is the North Thompson River down there. So here is Dunn Peak and down there is Pink Spot Lake. If you're interested in more stories about the Wind Pass and Sweet Home Mines or the Baldy Mountain Fire Lookout Station, check out this book. And here's the route we took from Dunn Lake up to Baldy Mountain. Thanks for coming along on our trip up Baldy Mountain. And if you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up, leave us a message and consider subscribing and ringing that bell icon and you'll be notified of all our upcoming videos. <laughs>